Hooker heaves it downfield. He's got a man, and it is caught by Turner. Breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Wes Bryant here with Mike Nizalik of the Roanoke Times talking a little Virginia Tech Hokies ACC storylines. Mike, this season, are there are a lot of teams in the mix as far as who could maybe finish in that second spot and meet the Clemson Tigers in the ACC championship game. People are talking North Carolina Tar Heels, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, and the Virginia Tech Hokies. Where do you see this team fitting into that mix? Well, before the schedule change, yeah, I thought they were, they had a good kind of look, you know, you get Penn State early and then, you know, you got the Coastal, uh, which is obviously down, you know, outside of North Carolina, but now you, you take Georgia Tech out of there, you add Clemson, uh, it, it has the potential, I think, to be a little more challenging. Hendon Hooker doing a Bryce Perkins impersonation inside the five touchdown. Now, Hendon Hooker at quarterback last year, he really came on really productive down the stretch. Does he look like he has that starting job on lock? And if so, how has his development been over this offseason? Kendon, who, like you said, put on some really good film last year, didn't turn the ball over, uh, really improved the running game with kind of the dual threat aspect of his game. I think his skill set is what the coaches like. Uh, Coach Fonte talks about expected outcomes, and that's what they got with Hendon Hooker. Continuity always important on the offensive line. You get all five of them back this year. Keyshawn King in that running game, Khalil Herbert, the transfer coming over from Kansas. What can we expect from this running game? Will we get some improvement there? Yeah, I, I, you'd expect it. The offensive line, I think, is the strongest position on either side of the ball for this team. Like you said, they're returning not just five starters, more like seven or eight, because they were rotating guys on the inside, kind of by, uh, uh, you know, uh, dr every drive. Uh, Keyshawn King was a guy that showed flashes last year. Khalil Herbert's a guy, you know, you look at some of the numbers he put up at Kansas. He had a couple of games where 291 yards a couple of years ago, went against West Virginia. Last year, he destroyed Boston College. Uh, he's, a, he's a back that kind of well, Virginia Tech hasn't had somebody you could feed the ball to consistently. That punt is going to land very short on a couple bounces. Robinson will take it and stays on his feet. Tavion Robinson into Virginia territory and all the way inside the 30. Back to back big punt returns. Tavion, I think, is a guy we talk about where he might be the most dangerous as a punt return. He got to do that for two games at the end of the year last year. And a really dynamic guy. Uh, I think you could be looking at him moving all around the field. I think he's going to take a step forward. He was just a true freshman last year and put up solid numbers. Trey Turner has all kind of the, the skill set to be, I think, you know, one of the top receivers in the ACC. Like he was trying to set up the screen, sack, fumbled, scoop, score, room service, Hokies. Now, Bud Foster, the legend, we know all about him and the pedigree he's instilled with the Hokies. Justin Hamilton steps in, a protege of his. Are you hearing about any differences in the defense philosophies, how things have been moving over there? Uh, Bud was fine trying to get uh, guys that were a little smaller, get production and make them kind of uh, play at those positions. But uh, Justin Hamilton wants size. He wants guys that are going to be a little more intimidating on the edge. I think they've got it. Losing Caleb Farley, I think that, that hole is going to be tough to fill. But I mean, they still have, you know, nine guys back that started last year. And that linebacking core is as experienced as any in the ACC. What's the ceiling for this Virginia Tech team and how can they get there? You know, if they finish with less than eight or nine wins, that's going to be a disappointment. So I think that's kind of where you look at, I, I mean, you know, tens, 10 wins is possible. Uh, and I think anything less than nine or eight, you're talking about a disappointing season. Obviously, we don't know with the coronavirus sort of hanging over everything, and but if they can stay healthy and things kind of go, they, they keep their team together, there's no reason this team can't be an eight or nine win team and even flirt with 10 wins.